Hello, and thanks for joining me. My name is Aaron Eberhard. I run Vector Manufacturing, and uh, this post came about from Sam on the Titans of CNC forum on Facebook, the Facebook group. So Sam's problem was he was trying to do a simple five-axis toolpath where he machines all the way down a sphere, and he was complaining because he, he's getting a little bit of jitter in it, and by jitter I mean X, Y movement when he should it. Now, the problem that we have is it is very difficult to see this problem here. I tried turning on uh, my vector points, and I also turned on under my um, advanced backplot display. I turned on vectors um, so you could see the path that the tool itself is taking. Let me turn off that holder for a second. But as you can see, they're really not that bad. Now, don't get me wrong, the, the, first, the first part spins around kind of unnecessarily. But you can see that these things are kind of being led a little more than we'd like to see. They're kind of being, you're getting a little bit more lead than you'd otherwise expect. Now, I would like to show you a way to see this. I don't have Sam's machine or machine post sim file, anything like that. So what I did was I threw this thing into my machine simulation and um, he's using a Variax. Uh, I just threw this onto a Hermley. So we have an AC uh, multi-axis machine instead, which is fine. But let's jump right in. We're going to simulate this toolpath. All right. So we're in simulation mode here uh, in Machine Sim. And if you haven't played with this before, there's a lot to it. I highly recommend you get comfortable with it. Um, I didn't take the time to set up my exact position or anything like that because it doesn't matter for what I'm doing. But there are a couple of things that I turned on to help us see this issue a little more clearly. Over on the View tab, there's a bunch of extra features you can turn on. And the two that I'm going to be using for this particular problem is my Move List, which I have down here, and my Axis Control, which, you know, I could manually override an axis position, but the important thing here is if I hit play, let me go back to simulation mode and slow this down, um, you can see the individual moves here, which hopefully you can read. <laughs> hopefully my resolution's good enough that you can read this on YouTube. But the important one that I want to look at here is my axis control, because this is telling you the amount of change as you go through. Right? So we've got an absolute position, and you also have your amount of change. Now, if we watch this, I'm going to hit Run. Notice that up here, my X position is bouncing positive and negative a lot. Now, one other thing I'd like to show while this is kind of playing through, see that positive, negative, positive, negative, it's bouncing back and forth by about three or four thousand. If your machine sim just zips right through it immediately, you're probably in NC mode for simulation. And you'll notice what that means. Let me just restart this real quick and slow it way down. What NC mode means is if we watch the toolpath, you're just going to see the tool appear from one vector to the next. You're not getting that smooth motion. And if you speed this up to like even halfway, it's basically worthless in NC mode, as you see. <laughs> restart. However, if you go to a length mode or time mode, what you're going to get is you're going to see interpolated movement between those vectors. So you get that nice smooth motion. So if you're having trouble getting your uh, verification or machine sim to behave, try setting it into uh, length mode. Either way, back to the real problem here, which is that our X position is bouncing back and forth. You see your Y is also jittering back and forth a little bit, but I think the X is the predominant issue. Now, that may not be the case on Sam's machine, it might be the Y that's doing it because of his machine kinematics. I don't know, but it's the same problem. Let's dig into why that's happening. So one of the things that Sam did is under his parameters, let's talk about the toolpath and the setup that he has. So coming through in your cut pattern, you have your surface set to flow line U. Now, if anybody wants to do an in-depth discussion about how toolpaths are put across the surface, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to, to do it. But the long and the short of it is that what a flow line motion is going to do is take the surface and get the slices that kind of make it up mathematically in the background. Now, what I mean by that, let me turn off the toolpaths for a second. If you go to wireframe, 
uh, curves and do a curve flow line, you're going to see that you could choose either U or V flow lines. And it's basically just taking this and extracting the way that the toolpath is made, that the surface, I'm sorry, that the surface is made. And it's extracting those out. And don't, we could absolutely go way in depth, but, you know, for our purposes here, that's a great way to get a toolpath that's clean right off of a surface. Uh, we're just machining one of them, that's fine, and we have it set to spiral, so it's taking those slices that you just saw and converting them into a spiral. That's great. The only other thing here, we got start point. I don't know that that's strictly necessary, but flip step over because when it started machining the surface, it probably, you know, it doesn't really have a great way when you're machining a surface to know what is the top and what is the bottom, and it probably started at the bottom and worked upward. So flip, that's fine. No worries there. Uh, 1,000 default tolerance and 100,000 step over. Obviously, we're going to want to tighten that up before you actually run it, but that's neither here nor there. The problem comes in when we get to tool axis control. So we're in five axis mode, of course, but this tool axis control is pointing to a chain and we're getting the angle from that curve. Now, what does that mean? I'm going to give it to you in layman's term, but I'd really like to take a moment to just pitch the uh, ModuleWorks end user documentation. Now, this is available right inside of mastercam.com. Log in there, go to documentation. Um, it's the multi-axis help file. This is raw from ModuleWorks, the people that make this multi-axis module, and it has so much good information in it. Um, I could spend hours just talking about what's available here. In this particular case, I want to show you the help information on this, this toolpath calculation type. So let's go to toolpath calculation. And um, in this case, I'm looking for calculation based on surfaces, which is right there. I want to go down to tool axis control, which is you know the page that we're on here. And we're talking tilting strategies. So we're going to look at this and we're going to be tilting through a curve. Okay, curve type and we're gonna get the angle from the curve. Now, if you like to know how things work, this is how you learn how they work, right? So this, this is the kind of in-depth documentation that ModuleWorks provides, which is awesome. And I highly recommend you, uh, you work on it, or I mean, you read through it. We're not, I'm not gonna make you read all of it or anything, but it is good to know exactly what's happening. But the long and the short of it is, if you read through this, what you're gonna realize is, what we're asking this software to do is take, there's a chain down here, just a little circle down here that we're pointing at, right? So what we're asking the software to do, if we look at this from the front, and oops, I forgot to turn on the circle, so just pretend this is a circle for a second. You know, from any point on this toolpath, we're trying to follow that circle. And we're trying to always point back to that arc as we go through. And it's projecting that onto our surface and it's mapping it on there. Well, as you could imagine, taking anything this far away and trying to project it up to all these points on here is going to have a little bit of tolerance stack up. And that's exactly what's going on. So what we're asking it to do is keep the tool pointed at this arc, but the surface is... The, the triangulated mesh in the background that it's kind of comping the tool position to is causing just a little bit of noise. So how do we cure that? Well, we basically take away our circle at the bottom and we don't really need that at all. So if we look at my second toolpath here, all I did was just copy and paste this toolpath just to come into here. And we're gonna look at the tool axis control again. Now, if you guys have watched my other videos, you know that I'm a huge fan of fixed angle to axis. And what that function does in here is it says basically, pretend you're a three axis toolpath. Yes, I know it's set to five axis, but you know, just stay locked to an axis. Of course, that's not what Sam wants. Sam wants a transition from the top down to the bottom. In his case, uh, his he had the limits turned on, so I know that his limits either for the toolpath or the machine, I'm not sure which, was 95. So we're basically just, we want to transition from more or less zero down to 95. Any of you multi-axis programmers know that you don't actually want to be at zero on a BC or an AC style machine because of singularity. If anybody who's watching doesn't know what that means or wants to go in depth on singularities, how to avoid them, 
et cetera, et cetera. Just leave a comment. I can do an in-depth thing on that. We're not going to get into it today, but nice rule of thumb is never go to zero degrees if you could avoid it in multi-axis, right? So we can come in here, fixed angled axis, and we can just simply say, oh, tilt at two degrees. And we want to gradually transition two degrees off of our z-axis, and we're going to transition down to 95 degrees with that little checkbox. And that's it. That's all we have to do. Now, if we watch our toolpath, you're going to see that it looks very similar, but let's look at these first couple passes, and you're going to see that the vectors aren't stepping over themselves. They're not really twisted around at all. You know, they're nice and straight and consistent as we come down. And the reason for that is, of course, we're not having that tolerant stack up. All we're doing is just going from the very, very first vector in contact with this with this surface is going to be two degrees of tilt. And if we look at it from the side, you can kind of see that pretty good. Um, and then as we come down, the very last vector will be exactly at 95 degrees of tilt off of, off of that. Um, and that's it. So basically every single vector from vector number one to vector number whatever's down here will just basically be two degrees of tilt to 95 degrees of tilt, divide that back, and each one increments by that amount. Easy. Now let's throw that thing into my machine and run that through simulation. And if you remember in simulation here, what we were watching was this X value bouncing around on that old toolpath, right? Bouncing between plus minus and getting that jitter right inside of there. Now let's, uh, let's bring this new toolpath over and watch that. Okay, let's hit play and see what happens here. So of course our initial position looks about the same, but what you're gonna see is that once we're in the cut, this thing really isn't moving much. You might see it flicker back and forth between, you know, minus zero and positive zero, and that means that some some amount of digits down there that's kind of rounding, you know, below below the amount that we care about. But this thing will go through now completely rock solid, and you're going to see very consistent movement, always going that same amount as we transition down to, you know, you'll see your A move over here, your tilt as we build up there, but the X never leaves that right on there. Of course, we've got some Y axis movement. It's building up as we go, which is to be expected. Of course, we have to move off of the center line of the ball, right? And then the same thing with the Z, that's going to decrease as we transition through the toolpath. But let's spin this up a little bit. And you can see still, even all the way down here, obviously our A's getting close to that 100. This machine has a 120 uh, degree limit specified, but there you go. So the, the quick takeaway on this one is... If you could avoid over constraining it, do it because you're going to get an extra tolerant stack on top of whatever you are doing. And of course, that's going to show up through your toolpath. You're always better if you can to just have it shift based on the, um, based on the tool axis itself, where it could be transitioned smoothly instead of forcing it to point at an object or from an object, because that's always going to induce a little bit of tolerance, which will always show up as jitter. Thanks for watching.